Hey y'all, Boogie Knight here. How's it going? And welcome to episode one of Sonic Boogie Continues His Masochistic Streak and Samples Dark Souls 3. Now, this is going to be a lot like my sampling of Dark Souls 2. It's not going to be a full Let's Play. I'm going to take you through the basic mechanics, boss fights, graphics, give you a basic overview of what to expect with this. So that way, if this looks like something you want, then definitely go out and get it. But this should just kind of whet your appetite to see what you like. So I'm not going to waste any time because like the first time I did the Dark Souls stuff, it's going to be a long couple of cutscenes. So we're not going to get much gameplay time in. So let's go ahead and dive in, shall we? Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. Alright, so there was your intro for Dark Souls 3. Now get ready, because like this could be a lot of callbacks to Dark Souls 1. If anything, this is a direct sequel to Dark Souls 1. There's going to be some callbacks a little bit to Dark Souls 2, but not much here and there. So for those who are a fan of the original DS, oh yeah, you're going to have a blast. So I'm not going to go too much into the Creed character. We're going to kind of do what I did the, when I did Dark Souls 2, because I am playing um, a campaign already for Dark Souls uh Three as um, Skyfire, so we're gonna keep the same concept. So let's go ahead and revamp our old friend Driftwood. Zatata sounds tough. Um, this is kind of cool because you can actually make your age a little bit. You can make him sound. Let's see, how do I? How do I make him sound? Hang on. Um, okay, that's just been right. Class. Um, once again, kind of like the one you can shape it. Knight is our usual tank mercenary. If you compare. 
Uh, has a little more attunement, so he can do a little more dex, so he can do the dual thing. Um, Warrior has got a higher vigor than the tank. Um, it's just not a breed of it. Harold, um, he's more of a... I wouldn't exactly say more of the thief or the assassin type, but he's more of a cross between the warrior. Like the other Souls games, you can tweak it as much as you want. This is just your starting character. Sorcerer, we bring back the Pyromancer. Um, cleric. I don't know too much about the magic here, I should be honest with you guys. So if you want to do more of the faith-based stuff, go for it. Um, deprived, absolutely nothing. You can create it from scratch. Let's go ahead and stick with our usual character, the Knight. Burial Gift, this is your starting thing, much like in Dark Souls 2, when you have the healing wear, stuff like that. Um, Divine Blessing, fully restores HP, cures ailments. Life Ring, set, raises maximum HP. Hidden Blessing, Holy Water, that's for uh, FP. That is your Faith Points, which is going into Magic, because yes, unlike the other two Souls games, you actually have a Magic Meter. Fire Bomb, I'll get plenty of those. Fire Gem, so you can upgrade your Sword Fire Damage. Sovereignist Soul, like the previous games, you can crunch souls for extra soul points. Um, let's just say SP, which is both your currency and your experience. Rusted Gold Coin increases item discovery, blah, blah, blah. Crack Red Eye Orb, you can use that to invade. And uh, Young Boy Birch, I have never really saw much to use with it right now. So let's go with what brought me, and we're going to use the Fire Gem. Base presets... This is kind of when you can customize your character like an Elder Scrolls game or the previous Souls, but this can go much more in-depth. Commoner, Warrior, Astora, Dragon Academy, Crib Novice, has me before I've had my coffee in the morning. Katarina Merrymaker. Anybody remember Siegmeier from the first uh, Dark Souls with the whole Katarina origin? Oh yeah, there's that country for you. Serpentine Traveler, Great Swamp Outcast, once again, me before I had my coffee. Londor Shadow of Death. Anybody remember Anor Londo? Oh yeah, callbacks. And because I'm from Germany and I'm pasty, we're gonna go with the Erythelian. Build, customize as you want. I'll do Burly, which I am not. Appearance, a, here's what I was trying to do with the voice. You can sample. Darn it, why am I, why is the voice not working on this? Shoot, oh well, whatever. Whatever, my preset keys are not working on the age, so let's just keep going. Actually, no, here we go. There's what we're going for, the voice. Oh. That's just for effect for when you're attacking stuff. Let's go with Mature, which I'm not. Uh, let's just go with the face detail. You can do the structures, kind of fill it out, make it skinnier. Yeah, let's go with that. Features. Yeah, let's make them look a little more ripened. Face shape. Uh, his eyes are a little thin, so let's move them on up a little bit, make them a little bit larger. You can tweak it as much as you want. I'm just doing the basics to show you kind of the overall facial hair. He is from the north, so let's make him pale. Hair. Sample everything you want. Let's go with the standard Aragorn look. Hair color, same thing. Yeah, whatever. Brow. You can make him bushy. You can make him thin. That'll work. Brow color. Let's do some color contrast to make them dark. Beard. It doesn't matter, because once you get your armor going, it's going to cover up everything else. So let's just keep it simple. Eyelashes. Be as cosmetic as you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, pupils. Yeah. I want to give him somewhat a formidable glance, so let's do the kind of pale blue eyes. Cosmetics. Doesn't matter. You want to do tone around the eyes. Lipstick, eyeshadow. Make them more feminine. Make them more masculine. Doesn't really matter. Tattoo. Let's do our standard. Dark, tweak it. Let's bring him down a little bit because it's covered by his really shaggy hair. Bring it there, there. Let's make it smaller. Just experiment as you want. I just gotta do a basic so you get an idea about how to shape your character for those that aren't familiar with the facial and body shaping stuff. And we're gonna come to another cutscene as he rolls out of bed with a complete hangover. The alarm is too loud. Alright, I'm up, I'm up. I had a 12 hour work day and then an event I had to go to last night. Chill, Bell. Calm down. I'll be up in a second. Yeah, that was cheesy, I apologize. So welcome to the first area, Cemetery of Ash. 
this is kind of your things betwixt of Dark Souls 2 or the uh, Undead Asylum from Dark Souls 1, but you are fully equipped with whatever you started with. Um, the, as you're familiar, the, so the soapstones. These ones in here are just kind of the basic overall controls, so um, wads for that. Left click for slash, right click for block. Space to jump back, hold the direction you're going, hit space to roll. Hold down space to sprint, but unlike the other Souls game, if you hit space again while you're sprinting, you can jump. This is easily the most user-friendly of the Souls games, at least for PC. Let's go ahead and hold down Q, lock onto this guy, how you doing? Smashy smashy. It really is Cleric Sacred Chime. Cleric Sacred Chime, once again, is more for the clerical, obviously, or the magic users. That's kind of their starting weapon. And like any Souls games, look around. Soul of the Deserted Corpse, once again. I'm gonna refrain from doing a making a yes reference at a very cheeky time frame. That's more of Northern Line shtick. Alright. Let's kill this mother and then I'll There we go. Okay, so let's look at the um, upper left corner. The red is for HP, green is for stamina, like obvious, like previous stuff. Now, once again, but the blue is your magic points, and that is where the Ashen Estus Flask comes in. Ashen Estus will actually let you restore your magic points, so as opposed to having to take a breather, you can use your spells down to the bare minimum, and then you will suck down an, Estus, an Ashen Estus Flask, excuse me, and that will restore your magic points. But we're not going to bother with that. Because we are just gonna be one tough sum bitch and just go hacky hacky. Oh, you son of a bitch! I am not gonna go down that way just yet because there is an enemy there that I have tried to take on numerous times as an experienced person, and it has resulted in me dying over and over again. Pillage corpse, we got fading soul. They give you a lot of free souls at the beginning, so you kind of get your XP up and kind of figure out what you want to do with your character. How y'all are? Is there anything else over here? I don't think so. Okay, well that's just going into kind of the controller controls, since we're using a mouse and a keyboard. Once again, I def use the default settings, so it just depends on how you want to do it. If you are use other controls... Change weapons, blah, blah, blah. Like before... Right arrow key to cycle between your slashy hand, left for your shield hand, down for your belt. Let's keep our Estus flask where they are. And let's take a moment here to admire the gorgeous view, which is the quintessential bit for the entire Soul series. I don't know how From Software does it, but my god. Look at that. Ain't that a beaut? Honestly, if I wasn't doing a let's sample, I'd probably just stare at the could stare at the view for a little bit. Now, for people from the Souls 1 game, that ought to look familiar. Those of you who don't, you'll find out soon enough. So let's go ahead and hear the sound we love to hear so much, and... Let's light our first bonfire. Now, like other Souls games, when you rest at a bonfire... Hey, we learned our first gesture, rest. You can travel between bonfires, like Dark Souls 2, or after you get the Soul Vessel in Dark Souls 1. I don't want to rest. Uh, here we go. Gestures... Of course, the old favorites, waving, jump for joy. Since you're still watching this after 15, almost 15 minutes, we're going to say thank you so much so far. We're not going to quit yet. There are a few other goodies I want to show you this far into the, this early in the game. So I've noticed, at least from my observations, is the enemies get a little bit tougher after your first bonfire. Let's go ahead and drop these mothers. I hope to get us through the first boss fight, if not further on, but there is some... <gasps> Did I get it? Oh! I have only gotten that once before. Titanite Shard. Titanite, for those of you who are just new for the series, Titanite, you can actually reinforce your weapon... Plunging attack. Reinforce your weapon to actually make it more damaging. Once again, that is more good for the tanks than anything else. Whoop. That's better for the tanks than anything else. Uh, there's a guy up here very quickly. It's more better, really. I'm not gonna try and do some backstabby at tanks, but that is up. Oh, this the one. Their sacred chime. Oh, I hear footsteps. Come at me, bro. There 
There are backstabbing opportunities, much like the other Souls games, but I am not going to do that on a cliff side. Dangerous. Very dangerous. So I'm actually... Fire bombs. Good. I will use those when I get to the next couple of areas after this first coming boss fight. And I really should not be going into this first boss fight with that kind of health. But I'm not going to go back to the bonfire and have to deal with respawning enemies, so I am going to play the dozens. This game wastes no time throwing you into it, so we're going to go over here. I know I'm not explaining too much because it's a pretty straightforward area, but if you can judge from the big arena-looking thing and the big hulking statue in the middle, we are going to be at our first boss fight. Judging by the really creepy Eldritchian tentacles that are running through his back. Yeah, if it says pull, remove the sword, I wouldn't do it under normal circumstances, but this isn't a normal game. This is a Souls game. And I'm gonna really quickly back up over here while he gets his bearings. And target him. Meet boss number one. Udex Gundir. Now, actually, Udex is Latin for beat my ass with a belt. No, I'm kidding. Um. Latin is is Latin for judge, so we're literally saying judge good deer. So this is kind of like the asylum demon, making sure that you are fit enough to. Oh, that was good. And like previous, unlike the previous Souls games, when you get halfway down, you get some really horrific. Abomination of the Eldritchian sword. Don't stand like me. There we go. Damn it. Messed us up. Okay, I'm okay. I'm alright. I'm alright. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. No. Don't stun lock me. There we go. I do love the Lovecraftian. Woo! That was better than I expected. Hey! Air of fire destroyed. Got the coiled sword. And ember restored. Okay, so being unkindled is like being hollow with the previous Souls game. So when you get your Ember Sword, that's essentially you regained humanity. And we're at our first next bonfire. We're gonna rest here quickly. You Dex Gundir past the Cemetery of Ash. <sighs> that honestly, that boss fight is hit or miss. I've had some issues with it in the past, particularly when you're getting your bearings. But it didn't turn out too bad. We're gonna open this mother. Come on, let's see those muscles. There you go. I do like how in previous Dark, in Dark Souls 1, you had a lot of creepy abominations, Broken Straight Sword, that... Okay, we're still doing uh, the tutorials. How in uh, Dark Souls 1, you had more creepy-looking abominations that are mutated, but Dark Souls 2, to quote uh, Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation, they were more just dudes in armor. So adding that very Lovecraftian, almost like Marker-like mirror to my back. There we go. How adding that really creepy abomination at the halfway point really added some spice to this game, and I did not expect it to the point that I really kind of got creeped and bugged out when I saw that the first time. Because I wanted to go through this game 100% blind. Come at me, bro. Don't fall up the cliff! There we go. It's very important. Don't die. At least it's early in the game until we get to the next part. Homeward Bone, Homeward Bones, like any of the previous Souls games. Um, once you crunch one, you can go back to the last bonfire you rested to, or return to the area which we're about to go in. I'm not going to say what it is. Hang on. 
Huh, got all topsy-turvy. Hang on, there we go. Up here. Or to the area we're about to go into, just because a lot of fans of the series will immediately squee or jump for joy that they do not remember. Or for those that don't or are familiar with the lore will at least get a big smile on their face, much like I did. Let's go get up there. I am not going to go to that area because there is a dude that is a professional at kicking my ass numerous times, so I'm not going to go back there until I'm ready. Kill those dudes. Is there anything I can, uh, steal? Nope, guess not. Let's keep running over here. Ember, it's the humanity of this game. Like I said, you crunch one to restore your humanity, or your ember, and then you can get your HP back, and you can summon creatures around boss fights, or at any point, another homeward bone, you can collect those. My piece of advice is collect as much Ember and Homeward Bones early in the game as you possibly can, because they do get a little more scarce, Exhibit A, as the game goes on. Bone Dogs, at least that's what I call them, along with pains in my ass. So there's nothing really else to raid around here, so we're actually going to sprint up here and go into, wait for it, Fire Link Shrine. You should be familiar with that. So we are going to go down here. We are going to and speak to the Welcome to the bonfire, maiden. One. Hello. I am a firekeeper. I tend to the flame, and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones, and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. So the Firekeeper, she can, she's like the Emerald Herald from the second Dark Souls, so you can level up with her or talk to her. She will not reinforce your Estus, but I'm going to show you that very quickly before we call it a day. Farewell, Ashen One. Why are there so... Thank you kindly. I'm always curious why there's so many bloodstains here. Did they get the idea they're going to try and kill the Handmaiden? So this is the Majula of the Dark Souls 3. Um, I'm going to talk to that guy later on. I just want to go over quick things. This is a handmaiden, and unlike previous Souls games, you can sell stuff to her in exchange for souls. Pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> and yes, the insane laugh is back. So we're just going to I'm just going to go through a couple quick things. Um, There we go. You can sell stuff to her, which we're going to do, because I have seen no need for a broken straight sword. Or cleric's chimes. No, I need everything else. So. Ashen one. Um, we'll go over more buying stuff, uh, just to go over quickly. This you should be familiar with this guy. Hello, good morning. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine. You're in search Sorry. of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I'd wager. You require good arms. Let me smith you weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. I often wonder if him talking about smithing and being a smith is a Monty Python throwback, but who knows at this point. Um, reinforce weapons, infuse weapons with stuff like the fire gem, repair equipment. Uh, here's where we want to talk about allotting your Estus. This is where you can decide to switch more Estus to your regular or your Ashen. Since we are a tank, we're going to do all regular, no Ashen, but you can change it anytime you want. And he will be the one to reinforce your Estus flask. So if you find more shards through your travels, which you better, you can do that. So we're going to be here. careful. Yes, yes, yes. And the more characters you meet up with, they will actually come back here to Firelink Shrine. So we are getting very close to running out of time, so I am going to go plant the Coiled Sword here in yonder bonfire, rest here, and then call it a day. And when we pick up the next time... God, I love that sound. No, I don't want to touch the bomb bloodstain. And when we come back, 
we will look around Firelink Shrine a little bit more, and then we will go to our next area. So that being said, I hope you all have a good Sunday, and I'll catch you on the flip side, alright? Peace.